Okay, James. What I want to do today is try to find out something about you that I don't really know. And that's all the different things you've done over the years, you know. I met you when uh, about 25 years ago, and you were playing down in the mission at that club, which I can't remember the name of. The name of that club was called Bay Jones. Yeah. Well, some of them called it Bay Honies. Oh, that's right. But yeah. uh, it was in the mission district in the city. And, uh, well, actually, Bob, uh, I started off my career there because I was actually uh, only 19 when I would start to Were you play. only 19? Yeah. I was only 19 years wow. old, believe yeah. it or not. And so um, I went to a, a Sunday jam session, and I didn't tell anyone how old I was. So yeah. Uh, once they heard my playing, they, um, a gentleman by the name of Bobby um, Forte. Oh, uh, yeah. Bobby Forte was one of the fabulous saxophone players that uh, was known to play with uh, Bobby Blueband. Wow. And uh, uh, rhythm and blues uh, circuit, as well as uh, Etta James. Well, I was a big jazz fan at that time, and I remember that you said you'd played with Art Blakey and the Jazz Messenger. Yes, I sure did. <laughs> it's a little story to that. Uh, yeah. And the story is when I started playing, how I got to the opportunity to play with Art Blakely was I was always practicing yeah. constantly, and I was practicing in San Francisco on the streets. <laughs> um, actually, believe it or not, yeah. I, uh, uh, that's how I paid my rent playing on the streets of Market Street yeah. in Powell. And uh, I was so involved in playing and making connections with other musicians that at the end of the day I used to go to the Keystone Corner there. Oh wow, I remember yeah, the corner, yeah. yeah. And Great so club. I heard that it was this gentleman playing up there and I said, okay, well, why don't I go up and, and, and check out this drummer? Yeah. Well, at the side of uh, the Keystone Corner, they had a little small window. So I got a milk crate carton. I stood on the milk crate carton and I just looking in that window there and was seeing this fabulous jazz this jazz musician that at that point I didn't know who he was um, at one part of the show he stopped the show and he saw my face and he came off the drums and he walked outside and he says young man would you like to come in and I go yes well the place was sold out it was a packed show so as I walked in he saw that I had bongos he says, would you like to play uh, with me? I, I says, of course, I would love to play with you. Well, we sat down. He counted off the song. It was a bebop song. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And, and man, I was in heaven. Well, after that song was over, actually after that set was over, um, he took me, he grabbed me by the hand, and he took me to the back dressing room. I'm still not knowing who this gentleman is at this point at all you yeah, know yeah all i remember it was a long line of people that was waiting to see this gentleman right yeah and so i'm sitting on the couch with him and he was so calm and i'll never forget that day how relaxed he was but most of all how kind he was to people and how he just brought people in as a family so I'm sitting down and I'm just observing this. I was just in a heaven until all of a sudden one gentleman says, Mr. Art Blakely, thank you so much for coming to San Francisco. And that's when it hit me who he actually was. Yeah. And so he, he looked at me and says, well, I'm going to be here for a whole week. Would you like to come and play? I said, of course. <laughs> so immediately... I went home to tell him, call my dad and tell my mom who they, they said, Art Blakely, do you know who this gentleman is? <laughs> I go, no, all I know he plays drums and I like it, you know? <laughs> and so that was my uh, intro of playing with Art Blakely. Cool. Well, James, you know, I love jazz, as you well know. Mm -hmm. What other guys have you sort of had to do with in the jazz world? Well, in the jazz world, I really had the opportunity to work with uh, tons of uh, jazz musicians, but the ones that really inspired me, Bob, yeah. was I said that uh, um, Elvin Bishop, Bishop Norman Williams, which uh -huh. uh, Eddie Henderson, oh, yeah. uh, uh, once again Bobby Mo Bobby Forte. Yeah. Uh, even I worked with. Um, he was very shy, and when we used to set in together, he, 
he would, didn't even speak that much is, is Bobby McFerrin. Oh, he's a great, yeah. Yes, he's a fabulous friend as well. Yeah. He's and um, I, I love his work. Um, I've worked with uh, Larry Van. Um, yeah. I've worked with Carl Lockett okay. from Chuck Mangione's band. I've worked with, um, wow, so many of the greats. Uh, Gene Tracy as well. Okay, let's pop into the real pop world now and talk more about the more popular musicians that you play with. Well, uh, when we say popular, I mean I've worked with people from Sting to Nardo Michael Walden, which is one of my favorite drummers once again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I And also working in his band, the Nardo Michael Walden band, as well as working with Santana, Carlos Santana. Um, um, a lot of the pop singers that uh, I have worked with are now, uh, I would say, producers and things of this nature. Okay, what about your band? Because what's happening now with your band is that I really like the dancers aspect mm -hmm. of it. So where do you think you'll be going with your band now? Well, the career and the focus of going with my band after all of the, um, I would say, experience that I've had through all the different types of music, uh, my focus is world music. Yeah. After touring um, over in Berlin, Amsterdam, and, and been around Africa, um, I have uh, got this feeling of music that I want people to feel. Uh, the music that I'm interested in putting out is healing music, music that's going to make people feel good. Um, I would say R&B, soul, mm -hmm. to gospel, and, and music that really uh, make people feel good about themselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I come from New Zealand, mm. and uh, you've been down there a few times. I've been to New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. No worries, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're thinking of going back down there again? Yes. Oh, I love New Zealand. New Zealand is a very beautiful place. It yeah. Is, as well as doing, um, having the opportunity and playing the New Zealand jazz and blues festivals there. Yeah. Um, we do plan on going back. By the fact, we have a already a gig in New Zealand on New Year's. Cool. So we've already booked and we'll be in New Zealand on New Year's. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say 20, uh, 2010. Yeah. Uh -huh. But have you been to Oz, Australia at all? Yes, I've been to Oz as well and, and, and play didgeridoo. Oh, yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what part of Oz did you go to Sydney or Melbourne? Or? I went to Melbourne, I went to Sydney, I went to Port Douglas. Oh, yeah. Which, Port Douglas, I had the opportunity in swimming in the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, actually, I toured over there with a pop group that's called Pablo Cruz. Oh, yeah, yeah you're, I've heard about that, you know. I don't know much about Pablo Cruz. What kind of stuff is he playing? Well, I would say Pablo Cruz was a early, they came out with hits in the 80s, yeah. and it was basically a band that came out and mixed R&B and rock together uh -huh. with uh, beautiful vocals. Cool. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to stop for a minute.